Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another macro struggle. Today we're going to talk about the Calvo Ferry. We're going to talk about a little equation toolkit, and then we are going to use that equation toolkit to find the optimal price that a firm wants to set in the Calvo model. So what in the world is a Calvo Ferry? Well, the Calvo Ferry is part of the Calvo model, and it says that a firm sets a price, and a firm has to set a constant price for every period. When can a firm change a price? Well, it can change the price that the firm sets when the Calvo Ferry walks into their firm. The Calvo Ferry has an alpha chance of walking into your firm on any given day because the Calvo Ferry doesn't super remember where she's been and where she hasn't been. So every firm has an alpha chance of the Calvo Ferry visiting them in every period. What price should the firm set knowing that they have no idea when the Calvo Ferry will visit next and when they're able to change their price? So that is our main question. So what equations do we have available to us? Well, we have the price level, and I know that the price level this period is a weighted average of the firms that are able to set their price this period and the firms who are not able to set their price this period. So the alpha probability goes to the firms that are setting this period, so that's X sub T, and then the rest of the firms are one minus alpha. That is the price level from last period because those other firms can't set the price today. Inflation we know is just PT minus PT minus one. We're dealing with logs here. So that's just alpha XT plus one minus alpha minus one. So inflation is just alpha times the price set by firms today minus last period's price level. We also have the real rigidity equation, which says that the optimal price minus the actual price is equal to some parameter of Y, which is the real rigidity parameter. I talk more about the real rigidity parameter in a separate video. Feel free to check that out. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep going. What is the intuition for the optimal price? Well, I can guess what my optimal price would like to be at each period in the future if the Calvo Ferry doesn't visit me in each of those periods. I also know how likely it is that the price I set today is still in effect in those future periods or the probability that the Calvo Ferry hasn't yet come in each future period. And I also have a time discount factor where I discount the future so the future periods are worth less to me today. So here's just me writing out the optimal price for the firm. It's the expected level of the price today, plus the discount factor of the price level tomorrow times the chance that I can't set my price tomorrow, which is one minus alpha. Then it keeps going and going where all the way at the end is my expected value today, the price levels in the infinite future times the probability that I can't set my price into the infinite future, which is one minus alpha to the T times beta to the T, which is my time discount factor. That entire thing is going to be divided by the expected lifetime of my price which is just one plus beta times one minus alpha plus beta two times one minus alpha all the way into the infinite future. So I'm just gonna collect those terms into some summations right here. Then I'm gonna work on the denominator first because I can really transform this into beta times one minus alpha all to the K and use my trick with infinite series where the factor is less than one. I get to one over one minus beta times one minus alpha. Since that's the denominator of a denominator it becomes a numerator. So now I have that the optimal price is just that sum times what we had before in the numerator. All right, well, this is a grand old mess. It would be easier if I could write my optimal price today as some function of my expected optimal price tomorrow. So that's what I'm going to try and do. So I can take the first period out, which is this guy right here. Notice that I don't need the expected value today of the price level today because I'm expecting something that I can see, so I don't need to expect it. I can just look out and see it. Then this part that I'm left with is just the equation for my optimal price tomorrow. So now my optimal price today is just a function of my expected optimal price tomorrow. All right, well, let's keep that and let's think about what inflation is today. We know that inflation is alpha times X of T minus last period's price level from before. Couple of notes that'll help us with the math. Beta times one minus alpha plus one minus beta times one minus alpha is equal to one. And if I add and subtract the same thing, that's equal to zero. So I can do that freely, which means that I can say that at the last period's optimal price minus last period's price level minus today's price level minus yesterday's price level. Again, I'm just using note two there to add zero basically to both sides. That's all I'm doing. I can boil it down to this equation where I have X of T minus one minus P sub T minus one minus PT minus PT minus one, because notice that I can really put in inflation here eventually. That's really why I'm putting it in there. And notice that I can just keep going, keep going. I know that X of T minus P sub T minus one is pi T over alpha. 
Again, that just follows from the equation for inflation. So now I can just go like this. Then I can use the real rigidity equation to say that PT star minus PT is just V times YT, which I will plug in right there. One over alpha minus one is alpha over one minus alpha. I'm really trying to get inflation. So I'm going to divide both sides by alpha over one minus alpha. And then I'm going to get this equation right here. Notice that what I've gotten is the expectations augment Phillips curve because my inflation is a function of expected inflation tomorrow and the output gap today, or the difference between the output and the natural rate of output. So let's think about the summary results here. Do we have price rigidity? We absolutely do, because we don't have the optimal price. We have some function of the optimal price. Do we have a new Keynesian Phillips curve or an expectations augmented Phillips curve? Absolutely. We have some function of the output gap today and the expected value of future inflation. Were we able to accomplish these things without magic? Absolutely not. We have a Calvo ferry. A Calvo ferry is magical. This is not super realistic, but we really wanted these first two results, and that's kind of the purpose of the Calvo model. This Calvo model will appear in any generic New Keynesian ISLM model. Maybe it will be super explicit. Maybe it won't be, but hopefully this gives you a little more sense of how the Calvo model works. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe. If you're still confused, comment below, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.